listening to a late night radio phone in. Woman calls up and she's going, I got all these Vietnamese moving into my neighborhood, I don't like it. Too many of them. Vietnamese family living right next door to me. All these Vietnamese coming over here all the time. How would they feel? How would they feel if a whole bunch of Americans just decided to move into Vietnam? <laughs> Where do you begin? <laughs> How would they feel? Well, I imagine they'd probably spend the next ten years fighting a bitter defensive war, many of them living underground in a series of interconnected tunnels and tell through a combination of military genius, ideological conviction and village solidarity networks, they achieve a spectacular victory of the greatest military superpower the world has ever known. But then, the United States realises that territory it's lost militarily can still conquer economically, and so, using the IMF structural adjustment programmes, they play it open the Vietnamese economy to transnational banks and corporations, thus triggering the financial crisis which leads to the collapse of social welfare provisions, thereby causing doctors, nurses and teachers to migrate to the United States and look for work in branches of Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> where they are paid wages so low they are forced to move in next door to ignorant white trash. <laughs> on my return to Blighty, the first thing I hear on Radio 4 is Newsnight's rising star Gavin Esler saying, and I quote, American foreign policy has always been an essentially moral affair. <laughs> ah, bleh. So these two things was rattling around in my mind and I was meditating upon uh, a collective awareness of, uh, a historical awareness. Uh, uh, um, uh, these meditations, however, were interrupted when, um, when those two planes flew into the World Trade Center on, I forget the date. <laughs> Americans may just wake up one morning and discover that they're living among a bunch of religious fundamentalists in the most dangerous rogue state on the face of God's earth, engaged in international terrorism and led by the unelected son of an oil billionaire, but think of their state of affairs completely normal. <laughs> ...of preemptive war. See, we're going after the Iraqis because our intelligence leads us to believe at some point in the future. They make it hold the components necessary to develop weapons that could one day be targeted against the United States. We're also going after a waitress named of Sarah Connor. <laughs> Some point in the future, she'll give birth to a son named of John Connor, who will lead the resistance against the cyborgs of the military industrial complex and the Pentagon system. Capitalism being a killing machine and the humanitarianism of our interventions, the thin coating of human like flesh which allows us to pass among humans and only dogs bark. You see the analogy.